back in the 2000s there was a phase of MMORPGs coming out in an effort to dethrone World of Warcraft. Some of these competitors came from the US, others from South Korea. But Japan was kind of slow to this. The main reason was that PC gaming was never as popular as it was in other countries, but the appeal was still there. Back in 2002, Square Enix had their own MMO, Final Fantasy XI, and while it had a slow start, it had eventually become the most profitable entry into the series. And so, to rekindle that magic and go up against a World of Warcraft monopoly, they would release brand new MMO RPGs for both PC and console, and have them based on their most popular franchises. And thus, there was Dragon Quest X and Final Fantasy XIV. Dragon Quest X has been cruising along for a while, reaching more platforms, although never being released in the United States. But XIV collapsed under the pressure and inexperience of the team, prompting the total revival titled A Realm Reborn, turning it from the worst MMORPG into one of the best. Square Enix producer Yoichi Wada said in 2009 that he hoped that the game could take World of Warcraft's crown, and now, it seems closer than it ever has before. There have been reports of Final Fantasy XIV already overtaking World of Warcraft in player base, although those sources haven't been totally reliable. But what we can say is that there's been a larger than usual surge of new players leading up to the release of the Endwalker expansion. This is the time that most people get involved, but this time, the surge predates the marketing hype that inspired me to start playing in 2019. One of the big parts of this is online influencers surrounding World of Warcraft. Influ Influencers have shown that they're capable of skyrocketing indie games like Among Us and Minecraft into the stratosphere, but with MMO specific influencers, their audiences are already invested in the genre and are more likely to make that jump. These people have been called WoW refugees, referring to the gripes many fans of the game have been having for a while. And shortly after the largest World of Warcraft influencer Asmongold started playing, Final Fantasy XIV ran out of digital codes, and many servers have capped out. A lot of people have put this down to being about World of Warcraft, but I think it's also because of the community work led by producer-director Naoki Yoshida. Ever since he stepped in to fix the game, a big part of his job has been constant communication. Events like Final Fantasy XIV FanFest are often moments for overwhelming gratitude between the fans and developers. Player reaction and feedback is essential to them, and they've learned from the successes of many other MMOs, like World of Warcraft. New players could absolutely go anywhere, but the overwhelming gratitude that players have for both the game and its development team have made the community of Final Fantasy XIV immediately appealing. Naoki Yoshida saw communication as an essential part of development. After the initial failure of 14's original release, all the developers were saying was sorry, but Yoshida wanted to turn that into action and describe the ways they would improve. He currently regards the game as his life's work, and expects that it will go on for at least another decade. And while this does sound like a bit of a stretch, having all these new players is helping prolong its lifespan. Their philosophy is that you shouldn't feel like you have to be subscribed indefinitely, but instead it can just jump in for new patches or expansions, and that's a big part of making sure that casual fans don't get burned out. It wasn't all that long ago that Japanese companies were avoiding the MMO scene, but Square Enix's return to the genre at a time where it felt like live service games were going to bury them turned out to be an excellent idea.